Hello again, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wasman, and today we are venturing forth into the realm of multi-digit multiplication. We are in our math journals on pages 111 and 112, Unit 4, Lesson 3. Now, before we get into multi-digit multiplication, we're going to uh, backtrack a little bit and talk about a visual model that will help us understand, and that is dealing with area of a rectangle. So on page 111, we have this problem called floor tiling. It says, Maya wants to lay tile on a floor that is 8 feet wide by 24 feet long. The tiles she wants to use are 1 square foot each. How many tiles will Maya need? Okay. So if I'm creating a, a, f a floor plan for this tiling project, I need to draw a rectangle that is 8 feet wide or 8 squares tall by 24 feet long. So let's go ahead and draw a rectangle. So I'm going to do eight squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, I counted correctly. So now I'm going to do 24 squares across. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, <gasps> nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. Wait, one, two, two. I miss. Did I count that right? Twenty-four is a lot of squares. That's hard to keep track. It's got to be an easier way. Oh, wait, I know. Let's break it into tens. Because 24 is really just 20 plus 4. Or I could think of it another way as 10 plus 10 plus 4. 10 plus 10 plus 4 gives me 24. So let's try this again. I'm going to make a box that is 8 squares tall by 10 squares wide. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right. So that's one group of 10. Let's try another square. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There we go. Count again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And, oh, look at that, I almost overcounted. Came pretty close, though. So there, I've got 10 plus 10 plus 4 gives me 24 squares across by 8 squares tall. So that's my, that's my uh, total area, okay? Now what I need to do is i got to multiply 24 times 8. 24 times 8. I haven't done that before. Huh. Oh, wait a minute. If this square right here, or this box, technically rectangle, is 10, I can just figure out what 8 times 10 is. 8 times 10 is easy. That's 80. And if that is 8 times 10, well... This would also be 8 times 10. That's 80. And then this box right here is just 8 times 4. Okay. And, of course, I know that 8 times 4 is 32. So if I just add those uh, totals together, 80 plus 80 plus 32, uh, that should give me my grand total of total squares or total square foot tiles that would be involved in this flooring project. So let's add those together. 80 plus 80 plus 32. There we go. I'm going to bring down the 2. 8 plus 8 is 16. Plus 3 more. That's going to give me 19. What do you know? It's 192. So Maya is going to need 192 tiles to completely fill in her floor. Okay. Now then, if you hadn't figured out by that little piece of method acting by Mr. Wasman, um, I was hamming it up a little bit to prove a point. And that is, I can take a large number like 24 and deconstruct it into smaller parts, which will allow me to then multiply those individual parts and then add them all back together. Okay, 24 is two tens and four ones, or another way of thinking about it is 10 plus 10 plus 4. 
So I multiplied each of the tens together to get 80, and then I multiplied the 4 by 8 to get 32, and I added those three partial products together to get my total amount, okay? And that's what I did here. Explained how I figured out how many tiles Maya needed. What did I do? Well, I, I broke down 24 into smaller chunks and what I do? Well, I multiplied each part, each chunk by 8. Divide and conquer, but not literally divide. Division is a concept we'll get into a little bit later. But that's what partitioning rectangles does. If you take a look at this example right here, if I multiply 4 times 57, what am I really doing here? I'm multiplying 4 times 50, and then I'm multiplying 4 times 7. I'm breaking it up into its smaller parts because I know how to multiply single-digit numbers, and now I know how to extend multiplication facts by just adding a zero and multiplying tens and hundreds, okay? So if you look at this example right here, I start with four times 50. Now I know that four times five is gonna give me 20. So four times five tens is gonna give me 20 tens, otherwise known as 200. So all I did here was multiply four times five and then remember to add the extra zero. And then what happened is I multiplied 4 times 7. 7 represents the 1s in 57. 57 is 5 tens and 7 ones. Okay? That's just another way to represent that amount. 57 is 50 and 7. Okay? And 7 times 4 is 28. So once I figured out my partial products, partial meaning parts, product mean multiplication answers, I then add them together. 200 plus 28 gives me 228, okay? So what I did here in my example is, an, is basically partitioning rectangles. So I took my number 24 and I broke it down. I broke it down into tens and ones. I'm going to keep them, uh, the tens together because 24 is just 20 plus 4. And I multiply it by 8. Okay? 8 times 2, that gives me 16. 8 times 2 tens is going to give me 16 tens or 160. And then 8 times 4 is 32. And then once I have my combined amounts, 160 plus 32, those two partial products, I add them together, and I get 192. That's the same answer I got by breaking it down in smaller chunks. 80 plus 80 is just 160. Okay? So I can deconstruct these problems into smaller chunks that I can compute in my head and then come up with a larger product. Okay? That's what partitioning rectangles is. Let's try another example right here, 5 times 48. So what is 48? Well, 48, like the name implies, is 40 and 8. 48. So I'm going to multiply both those by 5. Now, multiplying by 5 is easy. 5 times 4, well, that's 20. 5 times 4 tens is going to give me 20 tens also known as 200. And then 8 times 5, well, that's 40. No zeros involved. So now what I have to do is add those two partial products together. 200, that's the 40 times 5, and the 8 times 5, that's 40 right there. So 200 plus 40 gives me 
240. So 5 times 48 gives me 240. Simple, right? I'm just deconstructing the numbers. It's called expanded notation. Okay, we've practiced this before when we were learning about place values. And understanding that each digit occupies a place value can help us do the, the work of separating these place values into smaller chunks and then multiplying the individual parts, basing all of our calculations on our single digit multiplication facts. Okay, let's try one more. Nine times sixty-three. Nine times sixty-three. So sixty-three is sixty and three. And I'm going to multiply by nine. Now I know that nine times six is fifty-four. So nine times six tens is going to give me fifty-four tens, otherwise known as five hundred and forty. And I know that 9 times 3 is 27. So now what I do is I just take 540 and I add it to 27, and that's going to give me my total product. Okay? 0 plus 7, 4 plus 2, and then bring down the 5. Now, if you recall, in the previous lesson, 4.2, we used a lot of estimation to see if our answers were reasonable. Okay? Now, when I look at... 9 times 63. If I were to round those numbers to the nearest tens, I could take 9 times 63 and round it to 10 times 60, because 9 would round up and 63 would round down. Well, 10 times 60 is basically any number times 10 is that number with a 0 with behind it. So 10 times 60 is going to be 600, or 60 with a 0 behind it. Or you can think of it as ten with a, er, 1 with a 0 times 6 with a 0 gives me 6 with 1, 2 zeros. Okay? Now, 567 is pretty close to 600. So that's a reasonable answer. Okay? Because if I rounded 567 to the nearest hundred, it would round up to six hundred. Okay? So partitioning rectangles is just a way to break down a problem into its smaller parts and then just uh, complete each part. Okay? You just have to remember that you have to reassemble the parts once you've got all of your partial products. And that's how you go about doing partitioning rectangles. Okay? So go ahead and try problem number three on your own, and then take a look at number four and see how Kadir approached the problem differently than Ariadne. Okay, they were both multiplying 75 times 8. They both took different approaches, much like I did with 24 times 8. I broke down 24 into 20 and 4, and then I also broke down 24 into 10 plus 10 plus 4. Okay? It's a brave new world, multi-digit multiplication. Of course you've got questions. Then if you've got questions, you must ask them, okay? Ask your teachers. Hey, ask your classmates. Maybe there is an expert uh, right under your nose sitting next to you, or maybe a friend uh, you can Zoom with uh, if you're learning virtually, or maybe there's an older sibling in your house that is now an expert on multi-digit multiplication because, hey, they are a one through fourth grade. If you've got questions, ask them, okay? Otherwise, friends, I hope that uh, you have a good day. Do your best on these problems, and we will talk again soon. Thanks.